course, during the coronavirus pandemic, there are a lot of things that aren't necessarily safe right now. And then again, there are plenty of things that are safe. Well, today we have an in-depth discussion with a local doctor who focuses on IVF, which is in vitro fertilization. And we're talking about if it's safe to have children right now. All right, we're joined this afternoon by Dr. Mark Trollis, who's Director of Fertility Care at the In Vitro Fertilization Center, the IVF Center in Winter Park. Good to see you, Dr. Trollis. It's been a little while. Hope you're doing well. I'm doing great, Eric, and I hope you are as well. Always great to be with you. Always great to be with you as well. So listen, during the pandemic, uh, what would you say is the number one question your patients are asking you when it comes to uh, fertility and pregnancy? Well, two questions are, one of them is that, when are you going to be able to be up to do retrieval and procedures? But the second, equally important is, is it safe for us to get pregnant? And those are right now very difficult questions to answer. Actually, we're up to do cycles of treatment uh, with the governor allowing uh, non-urgent procedures. So that will be starting next week. But the question about safety in pregnancy, that's the one that we don't have absolute information on. Uh, what we know right now is that pregnant women are no more susceptible than non-pregnant women to get coronavirus. If they do, the outcome is essentially the same. About 85% of women will have very mild symptoms, about a third none, 10% uh, more serious respiratory symptoms and about 5% or less will actually be on a ventilator. So uh, those are about the numbers that we see. But equally important, uh, Eric, is what is the outcome of the pregnancy if a woman has COVID-19 during pregnancy? It seems as though there may be a little higher risk of preterm labor, maybe some growth restriction of baby. Fortunately, at this point, we're not seeing baby having a high risk of, of receiving the virus. In other words, vertical transmission from mom to baby. Uh, a few few small reports out of China uh, and, and uh, New York suggesting that there might be transmission, but we really don't have good enough evidence to support there were actual transmission from placenta from mom to baby, okay? Uh, so that's that's reassuring news there. Yeah, definitely. And but what about for those challenged with infertility? I mean, are are people able to get to uh, in vitro fertilization uh, centers for treatments here in Florida? Is that considered elective? Well, there's sort of two terms that we use. One of them is urgent and non-urgent. Another one's essential and non-essential. Infertility is a disease designated by the World Health Organization, the AMA and the American Society for Reproductive Medicine. So we consider that obviously essential, but the governor's executive order had restricted non-urgent procedures during the time for mitigation of the transmission of the coronavirus. So we complied with that. I would say that uh, unfortunately not all clinics did, uh, not just in Florida, but across the country. So we went by the American Society for Reproductive Medicine guidance toward the middle of March, recommending that we withhold treatment because it is non-urgent, although essential. And then the governor's executive order came out. So we have not been open for IVF since sort of the mid to end of March when we completed the cycles that were already underway. And the reason, of course, is to not utilize important resources for personal protective equipment yeah. and increase uh, if unfortunately there are complications of procedures that we do to increase the admissions to a hospital. So we really did everything to to group together as a society and reduce the chances uh, that we would increase the chance of transmission. So do they have to start from the beginning again then? Well, there's different ways of, of conceiving, right? So there's fertility medication with intrauterine insemination or IUI. And those cycles can begin with a woman's period and the IUI will be performed essentially two weeks later. In vitro fertilization is often will give them birth control pills for about a week or two as they're getting ready to start stimulating. Stimulation is about 10 days and the egg retrieval is two days later. So we're dealing with about a month to get ready. So we're gonna be starting to do cycles in June, but 
We are going to be doing it slowly, and we're going to be doing it with, with a priority on patients with cancer that need emergency fertility preservation cycles. We're going to be doing them with patients who have severe ovarian aging because time is of the essence there. And then if, if they have some financial or insurance pressing issues. So we're not going to open up the floodgates and just allow everybody to go through that have been waiting because that could unfortunately increase the risk of transmission amongst patients, their families, our staff and their families, and then we've done nothing with mitigating risk from the from the pause that we just went through. Right. All right, Dr. Mark Trollis, Director of Fertility Care at the IVF Center in Winter Park. Always good to see you. Thanks for uh, stopping by and going in depth with us. My pleasure, Eric. Stay safe and my prayers to everyone and, and hopefully uh, we're able to get going right away and relieve their burden. Yeah, get the steps going toward uh, returning to more normalcy. Thank you very, very much. My pleasure.